during the last 200 years, uh, we have been creating a, a mass production system, right? And we have uh, concentrated and accumulated the production means in the hands of a few. And we have created factories that are a thousand miles away from cities where things are produced. We pay a price for a good, and most of us actually don't really think about how it's made, where it's made of, you know, we're just consuming. And we've been put for generations now into a position of a very passive form of consumption. That product needs to be made with materials that fly also from other places in an extractive model. And then when they are ready to be shipped, they go and travel again thousands of kilometers uh, using fossil fuels and not only causing an environmental consequence, but also huge uh, social trace. At the current rate, of production, and the way we produce things, people say we would need three planets by 2050, as if it was even an option. So we need to find new ways, and that's of course where the circular economy comes in, and upcycling of furniture. How can we keep furniture alive for a longer time? Where we have unprecedented access to new sorts of technologies, new sorts of educational tools, new sorts of spaces, New sorts of energies and materials almost allowing anyone to make anything. That is a huge game changer. And we need to learn and explore much further to see how that can actually change the face of production as we know it. We have amazing people here for the Made Again Challenge. Eight IKEA designers, eight ambassadors, people that we pick and choose from all around the world because of their perspective and experience around what we're thinking about, and 12 local makers. We basically selected a, some of the most amazing people, like our emerging creators that are disrupting uh, the way things are done. We have biologists, designers, makers, uh, woodworkers, metal workers, programmers uh, from all over the world. Uh, we put them together with IKEA designers, with local makers, basically to prototype for one week, um, let's say, the future of, of production, the future of how we make things. And this is one big exploration. We'll see what comes out of here. Waste might become the raw material of tomorrow. It is one of the options. And so the whole idea is to bring all those talented people with all their different backgrounds and way of working to look at waste as a high potential material for the future of fabrication. So how do we deal with waste as it is now? That's something that needs to be tackled. And the core issue is that people throw away stuff that is perfect to five. Oh. What do you do with polyester? We don't know. How do we approach waste? How do we create something that the public can engage with, can learn from, can involve themselves in. We were going to start out making a bio lab, bio factory, to make biological materials. So we've kind of gone big and now thinking about kind of systems change which requires fairly complicated conversations. Yes, because the whole challenge is about making so it has to be relevant. If it's not relevant, if then we're just making more things. We took this decision really early on to approach this as not a matter of technology but a matter of um, philosophy around uh, what is waste. So by integrating um, bacteria and fungi and insects and plants, we can create a park which both um, decomposes waste and also by choosing the right plants and be the raw material for the next products. How do we see production and reproduction, not as a centralized thing, but as something that can really happen close to our homes? If you have the capacities and the skills and the infrastructure in cities to make things locally, then you don't need to have cargo ships delivering materials in the world. You basically produce everything in the city, 
in a circular economy model with people empowered through these tools. And the only thing that travels in the world is bits, is information. It seems that there's already this uh, scrapping community collecting the metal from, uh, from the scrap that's been put out, out there in the street and selling it to be melted uh, into new metal and reintroduced into production. From our perspective, they're actually pioneers of the circular economy. Yes, this thing that, that they're actually doing is what the rest of us should uh, learn from. Five days is very, very short. It is just the beginning. And I think what is very, very important is that it is not solutions that will be implemented everywhere that we found. But at least, I think, we ask ourselves the right questions. And that opens up a world of possibilities for further explorations. It's about creating locally productive and globally connected cities. We need to rethink the way we make. And that's what the challenge is about. We need to make things that are made to be made again. Ideally in a system that is powered by sustainable energy with material that are produced responsibly and reproduced eternally. <laughs>